Hi, we're going to be looking at Seamus Heaney's The Otter today and there are a number of things that we can look at which extend what we've been looking at in Heaney's poems but particularly to bring to your attention is the extended metaphor and central poetic image. Um, in this poem, more than many, the importance of the title should be looked at. We'll explore the language and lexical choices in detail. Look at how meaning is crafted in literary technique. Notice how Heaney shifts the focus and creates emotional impact in a number of different ways. And reflect on the use of adverbials and temporal markers to structure the narrative. So by deconstructing and understanding the nature of that recounting, we can explore how the memory of time and place is crafted and then consider the poetic voice and viewpoint. The Otter by Seamus Heaney. Have a look at these pictures of, of otters. They are lithe, beautiful, sleek, energetic, vibrant, comical at times. If you watch them in zoos and things, they often draw lots of attention from crowds. Think about these images here and then consider why you would choose that to express your love. Now look at the images here of a woman swimming and the woman on the left, Marie Devlin, who is referred to as the otter throughout the text. Think about the same attributes for the otter being applied to show your devotion and love to your wife. So by wanting to compare your wife to something strange, we're looking at this process of defamiliarization and how poets and creatives will often take something familiar that we know of and write about it in a new way to make it strange to defamiliarize it and draw our attention to something so that it's stronger, bolder. Heaney, in wanting to express his love for his wife and recall the intensity of their romance over time, starts with a memory. And he said, I started where I always like to start, in the ground of memory and sensation. Heaney married Marie Devlin in August 1965. They had a very long, happy marriage and throughout their life he wrote numerous poems to express his love for her. He may have chosen some unusual subject matter at times, but the sincerity of his feelings is clear. The Otter Read. For a poem that is, that is entitled The Otter, it doesn't take long before you realise there is not much here that is about an otter. It is mainly, if not all, about his wife. The title The Otter places us in metaphoric or figurative territory and actually most of the language which we might apply to a swimming creature, plunged, surfacing, surfacing, swim on your back, silent thigh shaking and pelt. They are the only real words which bring to sense the animalistic or zoomorphic qualities of his able wife who swims with skill, proficiency. 
If you look towards the end of the sentence of the uh, stanzas, my two hands are plumbed water, you are my palpable lithe otter of memory. He's not even really comparing his wife to an otter, but an otter of memory, something that swims through his mind, swims from the past, breaking the surface of his memory. And he pictures her in that past, swimming in the back. So the extended metaphor of the otter, suggested by the title, the otter, is really something that is in his mind, bringing to his mind the narrative and memory of his wife. If we look at the structure of the verbs here, um, we can see how the narrative recounting in the past tense, you plunged, Tuscany wavered and swung, and I loved surfacing and surfacing. She was surfacing and surfacing again, that progressive in the past. I sat, you were beyond me, the mellowed clarities thinned and disappointed. All those things happened in recounting the memory and building the narrative for us to understand the context. But then we move to the present in I hold you now. We are close and deep. So he's addressing his wife in the present about that past. My two hands are plumbed water, you are. And then if we look at the sections in blue, the slow loading as atmosphere on water, this more figurative language is what is happening in his mind in the reconstruction rather than the re recounted past in the reconstructing of it he creates this more figurative language so the slow loading we are close and deep as the atmosphere on water a comparison there his hands are plumbed water out of the otter of memory is who she is in his mind, in the pool of the moment. The fragmentation of light on the water and the movement through water is this narrative in his mind coming to mind and now being retold again and again. And he sees her turning to swim on your back, each silent thigh shaking kick retilting the light. Interestingly, the light here causes Tuscany to waver. What she does in disturbing the water, disturbing his memory, is creating a fragmentation in the experience. The pool of the moment scintillating. She swims and tilts the light, heaving the cool at your neck. And suddenly you're out, back again, intent as ever, back into a, a, a reality. There, heavy and frisky in your freshened pelt, printing the stones. The last line can work on two different levels. Printing the stones, in the narrative, she is dripping, splashing the stones with water. But it's interesting that he uses the metaphor for printing, making marks, making, making the shape of her presence felt by dripping on the stones. And he is printing here. The memory of this moment is printing this narrative, constructing this like the sounds of the text as the poem is developed. If we just look at the adverbials in this text, they help to structure the narrative sequence and to place things in time for the past and also to construct the idea of the presence. When through the pool, from top to bottom, again this year and every year since, these place 
the recounting of the story of her swimming in Tuscany on their holiday back in the past that he can recall now when you plunged at that moment back in time through the pool from top to bottom he pictures it reconstructs it and surfacing again that adverbial shows us that this is a recurring narrative a recurring cherished memory for him this year and every year since i sat dry-throated on the warm stones the distance there of on the warm stones in contrast to her in the water shows their relative physical different distance as he is able to sit back enjoy the heat but also watch his wife thank god for the slow loading he says in this more generic timeless statement of truth the declarative for the slow loading of what the gaining weight of what the significance of the narrative the sub substance of it as he calls it now so that when you come to the present when i hold you now those adverbials shift us to the present this narrative recounting gains in significance we are close and deep as the atmosphere on water something natural something material in their being together and he metaphorically calls it the pool of the moment and then suddenly at the end she's out in your freshened pelt so by reconstructing the memory as a narrative he expresses his love and cherishing of his wife something that he nurtures through retelling it recalling it again and again and by sharing it with her now expresses his love for her if we look just at the adjectives here and how they modify the text they will uh, help shape Heaney's point of view so sometimes they are direct abrupt as we've seen wet smashing fine beyond close and deep palpable live the otter of memory the whole of that metaphor there defining and modifying how he sees her turning silent thigh shaking cool intent heavy and frisky these show the excitement and the pleasure and the sudden drama of how she's described in the past but also with the longer vowed uh, sounds for close deep silent thigh shaking cool we see him nurturing the description of her and treasuring it if we look at the sounds in the opening stanzas heaney moves from the excitement of short vowels in plunged swung top to bottom wet head swimmers back and in reflecting in the memory slows and treasures the moment with longer vowels like wavered through the pool cruel shoulders this is reinforced by the use of softening sounds such as the affricate in plunge that softens the plosive and is echoed in swung similarly the fricatives of v in wavered loved every embellish the otherwise harsher plosives that end plunged wavered loved d d d and wet head back the pronouns here interplay between the memory focus of his wife in the second pronoun you and his first person voice i as in i loved your back the voice shares his memory and observation in telling of his love recollection and fondness as it is recounted repeatedly and crafted into the language of the poem the cherishing of the memory that scintillates in his mind is evoked in the onomatopoeia of smashing both dramatic and vibrant and its long long longevity is enhanced by the repetition of surfacing and year 
that is added to with the sibilance at the ends in the last three lines, where we have swimmers surfacing, surfacing, and since. In the next two stanzas, more long vowels cherish the recollection by contrasting the sounds with the rapidity of the plosives, and there's an easing of the emotion. Dry, throated, warm stones, you were me, mellowed, grape deep air. In contrast, the short vowels are used to paint the landscape itself the clarities, which thinned and disappointed. The sense of place is reduced in favour of seeing or recalling her. This is repeated after the brief thanking of God with the slow loadening. The assonance here of this last word, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the assonance here suggests a solidifying, a weight gaining adds to the sense of the calm recollection and gives the concept substance. Hold now, close and deep. And the end of the final line, the atmosphere on water. If you look at the pronouns too, Heaney shifts from I, you, me to I, you, we. As he recounts in the first person, he addresses his wife and then writes, with her in the plural we by the end. There's a bringing together of intimacy and closeness in the recounting of his fondness for her. It's interesting here that as he re recounts the memory and develops the, the crucial moment of it as he sees his wife, he moves into more lyrical territory with the metaphor, the extended metaphor of the water and the otter. But also many of the vowels here are much longer. To, are, water, are, my, lithe, otter of memory, pool of the moment, turning, each silent thigh shaking, re, light, heaving, cool. These words create the embellishment and the cherishing that he is recounting in the narrative. And then at the end, he changes again to shorter vowels. Suddenly, out, back again, ever, intent, heavy, frisky, fresh and pelt, printing the stones. It's almost like he recalls the moment when she steps from the pool, dripping the water, over the ground and those sounds here evoke that sense of printing the stones. Finally, the poem entitled The Otter is little about a riverbank animal, but more about the memory and recollection of his wife that swims in his mind, recalling past pleasures and breaking through the surface of his consciousness and imprinting herself fresh and vibrant in every recollection. It is not just a poem about the nature of memory and its playful evocation of it. It's also an expression of tenderness and fondness for the woman he loves. <laughs>